feeling. And uh, Professor Narstow will give his presence paper. Good afternoon to you all, Pastor Chair. Uh, really what I'm going to present is is the um, some of the ideas that we're pursuing at the moment of a, a rather big research project uh, grouped uh, demand response with respect to Bob. Uh, it, it's, it's all about, not it's about the supply, it's about the demand, how we can manage the demand in order to profile the supply. Uh, and in order to illustrate this particular issue, we've prepared a small video for you. But before that, let me just go through uh, the project. The project is uh, it's about 18 months into the project. Is uh, funded through uh, EU Horizon 2020 Innovation Core. So it's not about only, only research, it's about how you implement ideas in real life and therefore come up with some sort of uh, impact. Uh, and that's what Europe is all about now, is how you demonstrate that all this value of research can be uh, underpinning the practices. So these are the um, a collection of high profile companies, in particular we're working very closely with Siemens on the technology. So today I'm going to present to you the technology part you know what we're doing and then there are a number of papers already been published and there are uh, others that is on their way to demonstrate what we um, uh, what's all about with uh, Dr. Bob. Let me just let Dr. Bob to let you know what Dr. Bob is all about. Hello, I'm Dr. Bob and I'm going to tell you about an innovation project called Demand Response in Blocks of Buildings, which is co-funded by the European Commission under the Horizon 2020 funding programme. The aim is to demonstrate... Basically, what's all about is that um, I mean, if you live in Europe, really the supply is 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 um, is having problems with the demand. So, so the demand is very high, and therefore, um, utility companies and power companies they can't keep up with the heavy um, demand. So, so the idea is to move a little bit. The supply. Hello, I'm the supply. Dr. Bob, and I'm going to tell you about an innovation project called Demand Response in Blocks of Buildings, which is co-funded by the European Commission under the Horizon 2020 funding programme. The aim is to demonstrate the economic and environmental benefits of demand response in blocks of buildings. Blocks of buildings can be hospitals, flats, offices, anywhere where there is a concentrated demand for energy. So what's the problem? Well, utility companies have to generate enough energy to meet large peaks in demand, caused by lots of people using energy at the same time. Energy networks must also have the capacity to meet this demand. Energy systems are inefficient and expensive, as most of the time, demand runs far below capacity. As electric energy cannot be easily stored, the problem is most acute in the electricity sector. Utilities have traditionally matched electricity demand and supply by controlling the rate of electricity generation. Therefore, things are further complicated when we connect renewables to energy networks, which produce energy when the sun shines or the wind blows, rather than when we need it. The increasing popularity of electric cars may also increase peak demand, as commuters plug them into electricity networks at the same time. Blocks of buildings offer more flexibility in the timing of energy use, local energy generation and energy storage than single buildings do. But a lack of suitable products and technologies make this problematic. So what's the solution to our problem, you may ask? 
demand response programs, which encourage people to change when they use electricity or reduce their total energy use, can help keep energy bills low and help integrate renewables into our existing energy networks. Peak electricity demand can be reduced by shifting when some electrical equipment is used, using electrical equipment more efficiently, using other types of energy, storing locally generated renewable electricity and using it during times of peak demand. If we can reduce peak electricity demand, we can reduce the investments required in electricity production and electricity networks. These savings can then be passed on to consumers in the form of lower energy bills. The Dr. Bob project will pilot the tools and techniques required for demand response in blocks of buildings with differing patterns of ownership, use and occupation at a number of sites, including Teesside University campus in Middlesbrough in the UK, a business and technology park in Anglet in France, a hospital complex in Brescia in Italy, the campus of the Technical University of Cluj-Napoca in Romania, Dr. Bob Energy Solutions for financially sustainable renewable energy systems. Okay, great. So let me just go through some of the stuff that I want you to go through. Okay, so, so this is where we are. Uh, where we are. It's about managing the, the demand. Uh, now, you can manage the demand now through if you are in a direct response or demand response sort of rules, uh, you might be able then to reduce your energy uh, in certain times, and therefore you will get some rewards after for doing so. So, so basically, for example, uh, in the UK, as you can see, uh, we've got a demand response um, policies and systems. So basically, the utility will send a message to companies who involve in demand response, telling them that at 12 o'clock, for example, you've got to shut down your facilities because the peak is happening. So when they shut down the facilities, they will get a reward whether in, 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 um, in cash, which is return uh, money to them, or in other sort of incentives. So basically, the utility company and the power company wanting to really reduce uh, their peaks so therefore they won't invest more on new facilities. So, so that is the, the crunch of it. These are uh, the earlier project that we've done, um, which is called IDS, which is basically the technology that we developed there is taken into to be used in the direct response, which is basically it's about modeling assets, assets as these, lights, air conditioning, etc. modeling assets, and then having some intelligent system to advise users which asset needs to, to shut or you, which asset needs to be maybe reduce energy consumption when you have a high demand. So, so that's the, the story. When you receive a, a message from your grid saying now there is time to reduce your, your, your demand, which asset are you going to tackle and how are you going to reduce it and we've got some intelligence attached to it. So, so basically this is what's all about as you can see here the um, the sort of when you need the electricity, uh, particularly this is for the renewable, the blue color is where you, you probably, you might have some renewable that actually when you need it is not there. This is some of the aspect. So the idea is about technology, is about uh, human factors. So digital response involves uh, customers using and shifting their energy use uh, during peak periods uh, in response to time based tariff and other financial incentives. So that's what it's, what it's all about. Uh, the project is, is to benefit customers, energy networks and the environment, also when you reduce your peaks, benefit energy system, increase efficiency to asset utilization, increase uh, penetration of renewable energy. So therefore you can then, within the system, you can then set the, 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 where the renewable is going to be uh, used is going to be stored and how it's going to be redistributed. Particularly the idea of choosing two buildings or three buildings is therefore you could maybe able to manage the assets a little bit better. So you've got more assets um, to, to manage. So therefore you could you could you could you could then um, uh, juggle between the your demand. So so the aim really as I said is not strictly research, it's about innovation. 
is to demonstrate economically and environmentally benefit of demand response in block of buildings for the actors required to bring it to the market. So we have, for example, the customer, we've got the government, we've got the infra uh, 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 utility companies who are interested in bringing demand response to the market. That's to reduce their, their demand or reduce their, their investment. Uh, and these actors are um, the DNOs, uh, energy retailers, transmission services, energy services, IT providers, and gated and facility and owners. So what's the solution? The solution is I showed you in the, um, in the, in the video is, is basically about a set of technologies, uh, which is real-time optimization. That's something that we developed at T-Site for the last five to six years, uh, led by one of our uh, uh, readers, um, Michael Short, uh, some sort of algorithms to optimize uh, the assets and use of the assets. And then the other thing is use uh, adjustable optimization criteria and automated intelligent to adapt it. So whether you have really a very uh, manual system, in which when you have a demand response saying, well, you've got to reduce your demand now, um, you must shut down your air con or you must shut down your lights, uh, that, that's a manual, but that's not good enough if you have massive amount of assets. You wanted to know which asset is going to contribute to a lower energy uh, when you shut it down. So that's where we are, modeling the assets, having some intelligence on top of the assets uh, to manage this. I've got two um, graphs here to, to just demonstrate where we are at. We've got the what we call um, at the top here, this one here, this is where the messages come from the grid, the utility company. And this is the part where Siemens control the very uh, interesting systems and uh, sort of almost um, ready uh, for market, uh, which is called the VEP, uh, which is Virtual Energy Plant. This particular tool will receive the message from the grid saying, in, in half an hour, you have to reduce your energy consumption by X amount of kilowatts. So these particular systems will then control the contrast, control the arrangements, and send a message to something called the red one here, local energy manager. The LEM, local energy manager, is our work at T-Site, which is basically to advise uh, the facility manager what asset needs to be shot, how it's going to be shot, and what the influence of it. So the IT part of it really is the model of those all assets. <laughs> so basically what we have, we have an innovative um, scalable cloud-based central management system, supported by local uh, real-time energy management, which is the LEM, which communicates with virtual buildings management systems to do the very thing, which is the uh, advised customers portal and advise local energy manager um, to do the very thing is which asset to shot and how you can manage the asset. So that's the architect. The tools here, uh, the tools that we have is basically on the left hand side is the Siemens work with the uh, DEP, the consumer portal, and then on the right hand side, so we have uh, VEP provides macro level optimization energy systems, the LEM, which is local energy management, which is this part here, uh, provides the optimized energy management, uh, which is really is all about, as I said, optimizing the way that the energy is going to be. So you've got here, for example, uh, in the tree side, I'm starting to model uh, these uh, in, a, in a real life case studies. So we have generation of electricity, you have storage, you have certain loads, you have DMS, which is the building management systems. And the idea is how to manage all of these assets and try to come up with a, a reasonable suggestion to reduce energy. Now, it's, it's fine, we can talk about it, but in reality, when you have labs being scheduled, you have lectures being scheduled, you have meetings being scheduled in different rooms, particularly in public buildings, you will say, well, which asset I'm going to shut down? Uh, and how that is going to be working and how we can engage people in the process. So that is the sort of thing that we are tackling uh, uh, at the moment. It's not about only money, it's about the way that is going to go around the process. So the consumer portal is, is, uh, is part of the 
of the equation. It's, it's another big uh, undertaking uh, looking at integrating all the information and providing to users in terms of uh, that has been developed by uh, the French partners. Moving on, these are the four case studies. We've got one in campus in, in TSI that we do, we we demonstrate in DLM, or to local energy management. Um, uh, getting engaged students, um, professors, lecturers, uh, admin part. So we see how that we, we're going to do. We've got another three uh, case studies that we uh, we are in the process of adopting the tools to suit. One of the issues we have, for example, uh, we have a hospital in in Italy, where really you can't shut down an operating theater because the demand is is becoming high. So how you manage this? And, and the idea is is how to include uh, some of these uh, issues in the in the process, where the high critical assets and how we can shut down and work with people. We have another one in Romania. Romania is another interesting market um, and how it's going to evolve. So the market is, is interesting. Those who are interested in this particular topic, the green here is where we have a market that is supported by the government. There is a strategy, there is a policy that's supported by the... So therefore, when the protocols has all been uh, developed, uh, so the utility companies uh, will be able to have a contract with users, uh, and therefore when there is a demand response situation, uh, they will receive the message and act on the message. But other market is still in developing, and that's where we try to develop concept that will demonstrate the use and the value of these. Just to let you know, um, that demand response is not about energy reduction. It's about shifting demand. So ultimately, that might be to lower emission through less power stations that are scattered around the world in terms of the, the issues. So basically, these are the conclusions I wanted to share with you. In developing components required, the Dr. Bob Energy Management Solutions are already existing, but in scattered way. So Dr. Bob is bringing everything together, particularly with uh, Siemens' work, in terms of the um, virtual energy plant and, and our work in terms of LEM, which is the, uh, the local energy management. We've got a number of protocols that we're contributing to in terms of communications. Um, and, and basically, it's um, hopefully that we're in the process of demonstrating um, value. How much saving we make if we take the journey of, of demand response. Government UK is committed and we think we might be able to shave about 20,000 uh, pounds for the period that we are investigating for the UK site. Thank you.